Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, by popular demand, we're going to have a look at two VGA capture devices that you can see over here. And I'll give you a close up of these in just a minute. You see, I've been on a quest to find a capture device that does the job that I want it to do. So we'll go over some of the features of these devices, look at some of their quirks, and then from there, at the end of the video, I'll tell you which device is my favorite. So without further ado, let's go. Here we have the StarTech USB 3 HD cap and you can see it's selling on Amazon for about $181, which, while that may seem like a lot, compared to some video capture equipment, I guess the price isn't all that bad. And here you can see it on the desk. Let me flip it over and you can see all the model number information. There that is, and barcodes and things. And if I flip it again here so that we can look at the front, you'll see a very interesting USB connector, a USB 3 connector. This only works with USB 3 ports. Here you can see the other end of what that connection looks like. And then you have your standard USB slash USB 3 connection. They look the same as we know. Turning it on the other side, you can see the video input for S-Video, DVI, and HDMI. So those are the three native capture modes this has. However, I do have this adapter here that you see to the right. And what we can do is take this adapter and plug it in like so. And now we have VGA capture ability. So there's that. Next, we have the VGA to USB LR. And this has been discontinued, which means if you're gonna wanna buy one, you're gonna have to go to the secondary market like eBay, like you see here. I actually got mine for about $45. Now, here's where the confusion comes in. VGA to USB, LR in my case. I want to cover the different models that exist for this. You can see my model in the middle, which is the VGA to USB LR. There is also a VGA to USB and a VGA to USB HR, as well as, you'll see here in a second, a VGA to USB Pro. So there's lots of different models. And basically, the different models have different frame capture rates. And I think that was kind of the concept. I presume they had more memory. I'm not going into all the technical specs in any event. I don't think you'd want to purchase a VGA to USB unless its specs meet your needs. So if you want to get one of these, be very careful. Make sure you know what you're getting and you can do a little more research. I found the VGA to USB LR to be a good mix of features for what I wanted to do. And it comes pretty recommended based upon what I read. So that's why I purchased that one. And here you can see the device. I'll hold it up to the camera, though the Chrome will probably blind us. I'll flip it over here and you can see the other side. Very nice little device, very compact. There we have our VGA input. And true to its name of VGA to USB, there you have your USB input, which this is a circa 2011 device, so it doesn't have like the more standard or modern USB connectors that you see. I guess it's standard, just not modern. So here you have your USB connection and your other end of that USB. So there is that. So let's go ahead and hook these into the computer. I'll start with the VGA to USB LR and we'll hook that in accordingly. And then I'll grab the uh, StarTech here in just a second and we'll hook that guy in as well. So there's the StarTech, gonna hook that in. And once again, it needs to go into a USB 3.0 slot. That's important. So there's that. We'll go ahead and get that hooked in. And I'm just gonna hook in video output from that Compaq LTE 5400 you see in the back, and we'll do these one at a time. So first, let's have a look at the VGA to USB LR, and I'm here in OBS Studio. I'll add it as a video capture device. And the first thing we'll need to do is actually select the right device. I have two connected, as you know. So from there, we can go ahead and click OK, and we have this nice 800 by 600 image on a 1920 by 1080 backplane. So I think we've got a little bit of work to do to make this nice. We'll deal with that in a minute. So back into settings, I can go into configure video, and I'll show you how horizontal shift works. I don't really use these other features, so I won't go into them. But if we go to horizontal shift, we can go ahead and slide the image left or right, which is very handy because sometimes video cards don't always line up. Now we see that nice border. 
We saw it freeze as it was applying it. I'll go ahead and unapply it. You'll see it freeze again, and then they'll shift over again. There you have it. Next, we'll go to the Direct Show tab, and I consider this to be the Upscale tab. First thing I'm gonna do is change the resolution to be our nice 1920 by 1080 output. So it will output upscaled for us. And you can also change the image quality as far as scaling is concerned. So the higher, the slower, but the higher, the better. So you certainly have that choice. I found that bumping this up doesn't seem to affect the capture speed. Next, I can show you the advanced tab and there's this auto adjust option. I'm not sure if it does very much. I guess we could change it to a lower value. And I guess it'll apply, but I haven't really seen it do very much. And from there, we can go to the video decoder tab. There's really not much to see here. I can't really say I've changed the options. There's nothing really to change. So now what we're gonna wanna do is actually go back to our main screen here and we could try and scale this and we can see, hey, that doesn't seem to work so well. So we very quickly learned that we wanna go back into settings and just hit deactivate and activate and that will set the resolution properly. So with that, you can see we're a little overscaled since we adjusted earlier, but we can now adjust down and get to that perfect 1920 by 1080 output that everybody loves. Okay, it's not high def, but once again, this is coming from VGA. So now you can see that. Now I'll flip over to Windows 95 by exiting the screensaver, and you can see that the screen is all sorts of out of whack. And this is one of the things about the VGA to USB LR. It does take a little while for that adjustment to kick in. It does eventually kick in but this is definitely one of the negatives about the card. If you're doing a lot of resolution cards, this may not be the capture card for you or capture device. And as we restart Windows 95, you'll see similar things. We have kind of this mixed screen. You can see it start to adjust with those green lines that kind of fade away. If I go to Windows 3.11, we can see similar stuff with weirdness with a video mode that does eventually correct. And then we get to Windows 3.11, you can see that we have a nice sharp image. So it does a nice job with the scaling and that's definitely a plus. But when we exit, we see more weirdness and after a while it does correct. So that's always good. Now, if we boot into Windows 95, first of all, we need to let my boot it screen readjust itself, which it will here. And then we can choose Windows 95. Once again, similar weird scaling issues, but they do adjust themselves over time. So if you're trying to capture transitions like this, this is not the card for you or the device for you, as I noted. But once you get to a stable place, the upscaling quality is quite good. The stretching does a nice job. So I'm very pleased with that. It's just that you have to wait for it to catch up. So there's that. So let's kick into a game and I'm gonna kick into Wolfenstein 3D and we'll play for 20 seconds or so. You can see the transitions are pretty good. When we get to the Get Psyched screen, you will see those lines that kind of fade away. But as we capture the video, it actually looks pretty good. Granted, Wolfenstein is nothing really fancy or special when it comes to video capture, but I'm impressed. It seems to do a pretty nice job as I walk into the walls here. Any event, so you can see that it does pretty decent. So let's move on and look at the StarTech. And the first thing I need to do is turn off the VGA to USB video capture. So we'll hit the plus sign here and we can add a new video capture device. And this time I'll actually name it properly and call it StarTech. And we can click in there. Then we can go ahead and see the device is already selected. So we'll go to configure video. Notice along the top here that it provides good information about the stream and the signal status. Over on the left, we have our video input selections. Over on the right, we can change our scale type and good luck moving the dialog around. I find this driver interface to be clunky. We can mirror vertically or horizontally, which is kind of nice. So that's cool too. A lot of the other features on this page like audio input or the other audio input extend, I don't use. I don't really use the interlace. So these features I don't use, but they are available. For receiver property, really the only thing I use on this page is my offset selection, and you can see the screen kind of shift a little bit. Pardon me as I try to move this box around, which is going off the screen, by the way. But anyway, you can see as I change the offsets that the image does shift, and that is very handy, as I noted earlier. Next, we can look at the driver properties, and I have no idea what this screen does. I've tried changing these settings. They don't seem to have any impact. We'll go ahead and set the custom resolution output, but that won't have any impact on anything that we're doing. So 1920 by 1080 is always a good choice. 
Then you hit that little less than sign to make it stick, which is kind of weird. Anyway, so there's that. Moving on to the video decoder tab, you do have a lot of different options, including this NTSC and, and, and PAL, so that's good. And moving on to video proc amp, you can adjust the brightness and contrast, hue and saturation and sharpness, which is more than the other card allowed, so that's kind of nice. Has some nice features there for doing adjustment. Okay, so back here, we can click OK and we can scale this up and you'll see another issue. It doesn't quite scale up to the right resolution. It's a little bit over, so we'll bring it down just a little bit. It is what it is. As we launch Windows 3.1, you'll see that unlike the VGA to USB, transitions are nice. But look at the quality of the scaled output. It's terrible. So for certain video modes, this doesn't do a nice job of upscaling. We're currently 800 by 600, as you can see. I'll mess around with a scale type that doesn't make things any better. I can mess around with the deinterlace. I don't even know what that does. It doesn't make things any better. So the scale quality in some modes is just not quite as good as I would like, unfortunately. However, coming out of Windows, you can see once again that transitions are good. We came right back to MenuWorks and there weren't any issues with that transition, so that's good. So let's go ahead and boot into Windows 95 so you can see what all of that looks like. And once again, the transitions are very, very smooth, which is great. This card would be the card I would use of the two I have if I'm trying to capture some sort of transition or show changes between modes because it seems to do a much better job than the other card. Pop into a DOS window, no problem. And then as we transition to 95, which you saw there was the video card, not the capture device, creating that sort of strange artifacting. We boot up to the desktop and everything looks really, really good. So this card does a great job with that. However, I'm now going to close and reopen OBS Studio, and I'm going to show you my biggest beef about this particular video capture card, or device, I should say. What happened? We came back in and we have this strange scaling, and I can try and adjust it down, and you can see that it's really outputting an 800 by 600 non-scaled resolution. So once again, I'll try to adjust it some more. No luck. Let me grab the drivers. No luck. So this took me a little while to figure out, but I finally cracked it. First, I tried removing the StarTech device and adding it anew to see if that would fix it. And I'll actually go ahead and name it again like I should. And we can come in and what do we see as soon as it plops down on the canvas? 800 by 600 without any stretching. And you can see the stretch is set. So what gives? Well, what gives is there's a bug in the device. However, I have found out how to fix this and it's an interesting fix. So what you need to do is put the device into a more known resolution. A DOS command prompt, for some reason, will do the trick. From there, you can deactivate, reactivate, and now you've got your scaling back. Very strange bug. It must just have something to do with the different graphical modes that you go into. When I hit exit, I get my scaling back. Once again, not the highest quality, but at least it works. Going in to look at games, let's look at Wolfenstein 3D like we did for the other device. And you can see transitions are very smooth, does a very nice job. And as we get into gameplay here, I think we'll see something else. As we look at this, I want to say this is a little bit smoother than the other device. So the quality is just slightly higher as we look at it as we traverse here. Not too bad, all in all, as far as capturing like a DOS game, I'm pleased with this device. Now let's do a comparison between the devices. First, let's look at max resolution. And for the StarTech, for a non-4K device, you couldn't ask for anything more. 1080p, 60 frames per second. Meanwhile, the EpiPan advertises 1280 by 1024 at 30 to 51 frames per second. So you're guaranteed to have 30, but it may not reach 51, depending upon what you're looking at. Next, let's look at price. And this may not be a fair comparison, but again, I'm looking at this from a I want to do this today perspective. And the StarTech is about $200, whereas the EpiFan is about $50 to $100, depending upon how you score it. And again, that's because you do have to buy it in the secondary market. As far as video standards are concerned, the StarTech supports S-Video, HDMI, DVI, and VGA. The EpiFan advertises to support VGA. I think you could probably find a way to do DVI video? I don't see why not. Probably HDMI, but I haven't tried it. Again, though, you are limited by that max resolution, so you can't get too fancy, but if you stay within the bounds, 
Like I think I could take my Optiplex SX270, which has DVI output, and get it to work with this card. Moving on to transition smoothness, the StarTech wins, hands down. Again, the EpiFan is an older device, 2011, something like that. The StarTech is a little bit newer device, so it has more processing power and it can do those transitions smoother. As far as ease of configuring is concerned, I give that to the EpiFan. It's kind of set and forget. It has a nice clean interface and it's really easy to change settings. And that also leads me to the next item of resolution stretching the 1080p, which is important also to the EpiFan. Why? Well, it doesn't have that bug that the StarTech has. It gets really annoying if you're trying to do anything with the StarTech. And also, the quality of the stretch is a lot better, at least at these lower resolutions. I think that the StarTech was probably geared more towards folks wanting to capture with HDMI. At that point of the development cycle on a device, VGA was kind of a foregone conclusion, I'm sure of it, and that's why we deal with what we deal with. So, it is what it is. And finally, driver quality. Maybe this is pretty similar to ease of configuration and I shouldn't be covering it as a separate topic, but in all cases, I found the EpiFan to have a much sleeker, much more compatible approach. When I exit and come back into OBS Studio, I didn't showcase it, but the settings stay the same, unlike the StarTech. So I think the StarTech definitely has some work to do in that area. However, I will say this, StarTech has a big disclaimer when you buy the device that its capture program is flash-based as opposed to being something you could use on a modern computer and it suggests using OBS Studio to do your capture. I think that's kind of inexcusable for a device that's still on sale and they have not addressed this. So for a supported device, I'm a little concerned when it comes to the StarTech that future driver quality will also be subpar based upon what I'm seeing on the level of support for the application program for video capture that accompanies the device. Okay, well that's what I had for you today. My two capture devices for VGA. And at the end of the video, I told you I would tell you which one I like better. Well, the answer is actually neither. And why is that? Well, I want a device that I can just plug in and just friggin' works. Independent of changing resolutions or what have you, or restarting OBS, I just want something that works. So if you know of something that works, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'll keep on moving along with these devices using the right one for the right job. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when that content is available. If you liked what you saw today, please consider giving us a thumbs up. If not, consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. As always, it's been great having you along for the journey, and I can't wait to see you till next time. But until then, bye for now.